Well, hello. Today is Saturday, June 12th, and we do have some birthdays today. Today is Chris Waugh, Chris Waugh, W-A-U-G-H, Chris. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chris. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. It's also Sandy Kaylor's birthday, C-A-Y-L-O-R, so Sandy. Do you like being called Sandra? I don't like being called Sandra. But I'm just curious with you. But anyway, it's your birthday, Sandy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sandy. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. And it's also Angela and Alan's 28th anniversary. Well, Angela and Alan, you knew I'd sing. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, have a happy anniversary. I hope you have a great day. It's beautiful here today. It's about 82 degrees. It's a little on the warm side, but that's fine. I love it. And I'm outside. I'm in my happy place. You can't go wrong with that. Um... I didn't sleep well last night. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I tossed and turned all night long. But I still woke up pretty refreshed, even though I didn't get much sleep. I went to bed a little bit earlier than I normally do. Not much, about a half hour, 45 minutes. I don't know if that made the difference. But uh, I um, tossed and turned. I even got up at one point. I think about 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up and just sat in the chair. I was going to read, and then I thought, no, I don't want to do that. Because then I get too involved in it, then I would have never went back to bed. So, didn't, didn't read, just sat there, said the rosary, and I went back to bed. And then I slept, I slept until 9.30, so up until that point I didn't. So I got probably about six hours sleep, which I normally average six to seven, so it was just a broken up sleep last night. And then I got up this morning, straightened up the house a little bit, watered my flowers before... Sometimes I like to do them in the morning because then it's just like I got it out of the way. I know that's terrible to say, but sometimes it's just as the day progresses and it gets hot, then I don't feel like watering the flowers. Uh, my, I have a sprinkler system, but uh, like my flowers on the deck here, it doesn't get to that. And then um, the flowers in front of the house, it hits the ones in the front, but it doesn't hit the ones way in the back. So, and then it doesn't hang my hanging flowers by the front door. So I have to drag the hose out and, and do all of that. But, you know, it's relaxing. And then, what else did I do? All my neighbors are... Well, they're, what I like about my neighborhood is when somebody knows they're going to have a party, they get all of their... Because Saturday in this neighborhood is when you cut the lawn. And they do it at all different times of the day. But two doors down, they're having uh, Kyler's birth, or graduation party today. So everybody around us is cleaning up their yards. And, you know, so everything will look nice. Jim cut our grass yesterday. But he was just doing some little things around, you know, like edging and stuff like that today. So we were talking to the neighbors and, you know, talking to Kyler. He's going to become an electrician. That's his, uh, he's already got a, a spot lined up to be an apprentice. So that's good. I'm glad. I'm happy for him. And then uh, planning our menu. <laughs> the guy next door was out and I said, you know what, I know this is kind of rude, but we're trying to plan our menu, you know. And so he just kind of laughed. You know, you get to be old, you can say whatever you want. It's nice to be nice, so, you know, so I, I says, we already know, you know, that they're having bad brands. We know they're having a food truck. Uh, I said, and I told him, I says, Josh is coming here and he's having tubbies, submarines with all the sides. And he says, oh, we're going to have pulled pork and ribs and we're going to have a portable bar. And Jim says, well, that's where I'm going to be. <laughs> so, so we're going to make our rounds and get our food. Um, but stay on plan. What's nice is I won't have time to sit at one spot and just mindlessly snack, you know, because I'll just be there for a little bit and then I'll move on to the next party and then move on to the next party and then go on and on and on. So, so i got to stay on track because I told you my goal for June is to uh, have a loss every week, no matter how small, but I have a loss every week. And so far, last, the first week, the first Friday in June, I stayed the same, which to me is the same as a loss. I, I consider that a victory. Um, this week I had a... Uh, one pound loss, so that was good too. So I'm hoping to follow it up next week with at least a half a pound. Uh, I've reached an age where I'm not going to lose a whole pound every week, but you know, if I could lose a whole pound every week, I'd like that. But we'll see. 
I'm going to enjoy my life and, and eat the foods that I like within reason and uh, still try to lose some weight, but not obsess about losing mass, mass quantities of weight at a time. I'm just going to be happy with any little bit I can do. And Because uh, I told you, I plan on living another 20 or 30 years, so I, I've got time. I really do. Just because I plan on having another 20 or 30 years doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to have another 20 or 30 years. But, you know, like if you have a positive attitude about anything, it's going to work. I, I was, even when I was growing up, my mother always told us, you know, like when we were sick, and we'd be laying in bed, oh, we're so sick. And uh, my, but my mother, she said, if you know, your mind is a powerful instrument. It's the most powerful instrument that you can possess. And however you feel and think is how you're going to react. And I remember this one particular um, Halloween, I had woke up with a stiff neck. And I, I was like so dramatic. I thought, oh, my neck, it hurts. I can't get out of bed. I got to stay in bed, you know. And my mother let me play into it. And so I stayed the whole time in bed, oh, moaning and groaning, laying in bed, listening to all the little trick-or-treaters come up to the house. Now, my, brothers, my brother and my sisters carried my bag around, but you know what? I know that they didn't. I could tell by their haul and my haul that <laughs> they didn't open up my bag that many times. I'm not to say I didn't get enough, but I, I got enough. So then the next morning when I was complaining that, you know, like they got so much more, there was this one particular house that gave out, he worked at Wonder Bread, and they made these little tiny little loaves of bread, kind of like the size that you get when you go to a restaurant, like the Outback, and they give you a little loaf of bread. Um, and they, he worked at Wonder Bread, and so he would always hand out these little breads. And we used to love getting them because we would make little slices and make our own little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with them. I didn't get one of those buns. Now, you won't convince me that my brother didn't take my extra little Wonder Bread buns <laughs> and put it in his bag and then hide it so he could have it. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, but the next morning when I was complaining about my haul, that minimal that it was, uh, my mother is the first time I can ever remember. I'm sure she's told me that before that, but it was the first time I ever remembered. She said, you know, your mind is the most powerful tool you have. And you convinced yourself that your neck hurt so bad that you couldn't get out of bed. And I wanted to prove to you that you could convince yourself that you're not feeling well just as much as you can convince yourself that you're feeling okay. So if you would have just not played into that feeling so bad, sure your neck was stiff, but it wasn't stiff enough that you had to stay in bed all day. You could have been up, you could have went out, and by moving around you would have loosened up your neck, and you would have had a positive thought, and it would have went away. And ever since that day, I always remember that because when I'm not feeling well, I kind of will myself to feel a little better. Now, there are days that you're not going to will yourself to feel better. If you're just sick, you're sick. But it's how you're, you're thinking about, how your attitude is. And they tell you that about everything. I, I could see from both my mother and my father that when my father was dying for a long time, my father was dying for over a year, and he just progressively got worse and worse and worse. But he always had a positive attitude, and he always thought, you know, today's going to be a it's going to be a good day. And and you could see that he was in pain. You could see that he didn't feel well. But he never let that bother him. He just really stayed with it, with that positive attitude. And the last couple of weeks of his life, I could see that he just gave up. I could see it. And and he did. He died. He died, probably was going to die anyhow, but I think that he just kind of lost his spirit. He really did. Same with my mother. My mother would, was like just a go-getter. My mother went everywhere. And then at the end when she was feeling so poor and, that, and I told you she'd kiss me goodnight, or I'd kiss her goodnight actually, and uh, she'd always say, goodnight, I love you. I hope I don't see you in the morning. <laughs> I said, Mom, don't tell me that. And I go, your mind's a powerful thing. And she says, yes, and I'm willing my mind to let me go to the better life. I'm willing my mind. So she used her thoughts positively, even though I didn't think it was a positive thought, because even though she was ready to go, she knew she was going to go to a better place. And even with that, she still had a positive thought. She wasn't saying, I hope I don't see you in the morning, as a doom and gloom. She was just saying it as, as a positivity that she knew that there was a better life for her somewhere else and so you know you can't fault people for that you really can't and, and the same thing with your weight loss if you tell yourself you know this is just too hard I'm not gonna do it it's what's, what's the point 
you know, you give, you've given up. You really have given up. And you don't want to do that. You just want to have a positive attitude as much as you can. If you wake up every morning and say, you know what, today's the day. And then somewhere along the line something comes along and it kind of makes the day kind of go side, sideways. Just say, well, that happened. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's when, when that time I was, Denise was telling me she was with her friends and they were driving along. And somebody clipped them and they went into a spin. And then they turned, and then they went, and then they ended up going back facing the traffic. And they were both so scared. And then their, her girlfriend turned to her and she says, well, that happened. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, um, things happen. And you, you gotta, you gotta think positively. You just do. We can always think negatively about anything. You really can. But I think the... I tell you that I always try to look at the positive side of everything. Sometimes it's really hard. I am not going to tell you it's easy. Sometimes it's kind of hard to turn a negative into a positive. But sometimes if you try really hard, I would say 99 out of 100, well, I'll give it a little bit more, maybe 95 out of 100 times, you can uh, change that negative into a positive. Those little five times that it didn't work, there probably was a reason. but. I think if you have a really, like I told you yesterday, if you smile, just smile. It, it, it just throws off a positive attitude. Plus, people don't know what you're thinking. They think, what's she smiling about? What's she got to hide? <laughs> you know, so it's just easier that way. But I know I'm, I'm staying positive. I think that the reason I've stayed on this for four and a half years and I've not given up is I'm positive I'm going to do it this time. I really am. I All the other times when I've lost weight, I knew it was just... Um, temporary. I knew that. I knew that I, I would go on this fad diet and I knew I was going to lose weight and I knew that I was going to gain it back. I just knew it. I, I knew it. Um, I, I know that I'm not going to do that this time. I know I'm going to stay where I am at least or go better because I'm definitely going to get to my goals. I really am. Maybe I'm hoping to leave by the end of the year but if not it doesn't mean I'm going to stop because I'm positive. I'm positive I'm going to do it this time. So my plans for today are, I've already watered my flowers. Um, for breakfast, I'm going to have a vegetable platter, which is brunch, really, because look what time it is. It's almost one. Um, then we're going to go to Danny's because uh, we want to see how his backyard looks about 3.30 in the afternoon. Because we have a canopy tent to put up if it's too sunny. But he seems to think he's got enough trees, so it'll be shady. So he wants us to come over to give him the final yeah, that you're right, that is. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to come home. Oh, no, then we're going to go to Lowe's after we leave Danny's. And Jim and I are going to buy each other. We're going to split it, the cost of it in half. I told you, Jim has his money, I have my money, we have our money. We're, it's, it's worked for 50 years. If it, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. So um, we're going to split. We saw a wind chime that we really liked. That, uh, he makes fun of this wind chime because he says it doesn't make any noise. I, I can hear it sometimes in my videos in the background, but the wind's really got to be whipping to hear it. And we saw some really nice wind chimes that were a little bit heavier, that looks like it might make a little bit more of a, a sound uh, at Lowe's for $30. So we're going to split the cost, and Jim's going to put his 15 up, and I'm going to put my 15 up, and we're going to buy the uh, wind chimes. So that'll be our anniversary gift to each other. We'll see. So, anyway, that's about it for now. I'm going to finish my book today, hopefully. I do read fast. I will admit I am a fast reader. I started this book yesterday, and I'm on page 142. So I'm halfway done with the book. So, it's a pretty good book. I mean, if a book is interesting, I can really get into it and really, I don't want to, I don't want to stop. Some of them are like, there was a time that no matter how bad the book was, I would still finish it. I've reached a point that, you know, it's not worth my time. If I don't like it by the first 50 pages, I'm done. This one was really interesting. So, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit that like button, share if you think somebody might like to see it. And has anybody been to Bristol? <laughs> I got this from a subscriber. Once again, the, the, I, wrote it, I wrote the name on the inside uh, with laundry marker. But uh, it's faded, and I can't read it anymore. So whoever gave me this shirt, please let me know. I love this shirt. See you guys tomorrow.